name is Carolina and I'm currently a social media intern at Sparkworks and we are a strategic innovation company and are all about human-centered innovation. As my personal project I'm making a podcast series showing how versatile human-centered businesses can be. I'm here with Alina, <laughs> country manager from Too Good To Go. Um, thank you very much for your time, for being here. So to get started, what is Too Good To Go? Too Good To Go um, is first and foremost a movement against food waste. Uh, as you may know, uh, about one third of all food produced for human consumption actually goes to waste. Um, and we want to do something against it. Mm -hmm. Our mission is to empower and inspire everyone to fight food waste together. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we want to do these things really through five um, different pillars, such as schools, uh, households, politics, businesses, and of course, uh, the marketplace, our app, yeah. uh, which has a lot of the direct impact. Um, maybe in a more concrete uh, mm -hmm. way, what we actually do um, and how this uh, actually works um, for you to understand is the Too Good To Go app uh, connects users and partner stores who have unsold food left. Mm -hmm. So partner stores, um, it can be anything from bakeries, uh, restaurants, supermarkets, convenience stores, or really like even hotels, really any type of establishment uh, that could face uh, the, the problem of having unsold uh, goods at the end of the working day. Um, and maybe you have uh, used the app yourself, but yeah. um, us users um, can, uh, can scroll through the app mm -hmm. and see really our different partners um, and directly reserve um, and pay for what we call a magic bag um, mm -hmm. electronically. Um, it is really um, a win-win-win mm -hmm. in the sense of users save uh, delicious food uh, at attractive prices, partners reduce their waste, um, and potentially attract even uh, new consumers and of course the environment benefits because of course um, less waste um, is being produced. Sure yeah so probably the app is um, how most people know about Too Good To Go and it's very convenient I've used it before it's uh, very nice to have something like that to you know fight food waste yeah um, no seriously the the app uh, the app is obviously our 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 core product and mm -hmm. um, we are really proud that we achieved um, by now we have um, globally uh, um, saved over 35 million meals wow and congratulations yes, yes um, and um, attracted more than 20 million uh, users wow. so uh, we have come uh, quite a long way already but it's by far not the end at yeah all. that's remarkable yeah. so what do you do at you good to go um, I uh, now, uh, as you introduced me, and now I'm the country manager uh, for Switzerland. Uh, we are uh, 20 people here now. Uh, I started um, in the beginning of Switzerland, actually, in summer 2018. Yeah. Um, we started here and I was the second employee and in the beginning it was really about getting this going and creating the Instagram profiles and getting partners on board and yeah, getting users and it was really um, about starting all of it mm -hmm. and, and now after a bit longer than a year and a half I'm, I'm taking, I'm really happily taking over this team and, um, and uh, trying to, to bring this business to the next level. Really nice, very cool. You've been there yeah. since the beginning in Switzerland. Um, yes. So do you know what sparked the business idea for Too Good To Go? Yes, of course. Uh, it's actually a very um, interesting story. Um, so the idea started in Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, five students, a bit um, like you now, uh, yeah. had, uh, were sitting in in a buffet restaurant and they were enjoying a dinner together um, as friends. Um, they had just uh, paid for um, delicious and very good meal. And while they were sitting and chatting and uh, being generally happy, mm -hmm. um, they um, witnessed something uh, that actually they couldn't believe in. And I think, I mean, we all know, of course, like restaurants can have food uh, leftover and probably indirectly yeah. of course of course we would know that it has to go eventually to the bin but i think in that situation what happened is 
um, the waitress that were, were, was finishing her shift, um, she just didn't wait until the uh, customers would all leave. So she took the bin and the whole buffet that was still half full, mm -hmm. she just threw it all away in front of their eyes. Um, not, not even thinking, ah, oh, that's a bad thing. She just like did it because mm -hmm. this is what she does every day. And, um, and these some students were like, okay, wait a minute. What is actually happening? We just, we are consuming something that is amazing. Uh, like that is super delicious. And at the same time, some, someone is actually throwing it away in front of our eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, um, it, this is was really when they said to themselves, Hey, we have to do something about this. Uh, of course, they didn't know yet in that moment what exactly the type of solution would be, how yeah, it would be uh, structured. Like, but this is the moment really, okay, now we have to do something about it. This mm -hmm. was the start of the too good to go idea. And of course, in the coming months, it had to be uh, retweaked, refined. Yeah. Um, but this is when it started. And of course, um, it was actually funny because in the beginning, they thought it would be a concept for only buffet restaurants. Mm -hmm. And... Um, as you know now yourself, you've used the app. This went much, much beyond uh, what the, even these what even these five students could have imagined. Because of course, we're not just an app for five uh, for the buffet restaurant. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, no, no, it went much uh, beyond. And but the idea uh, was created there. Yeah, that's really cool story. I didn't yeah. know that. But you know, everyone has witnessed, I think, something like that, and it's really cool that they were able to take that up and actually create a solution for that. Um, all right, so I think you've already said something about this, but why do you think To Get To Go is so successful? Yes, um, there's, um, I think, three things that really make us um, as strong and why we are as strong as we are. Um, the people and their mindset, I will say, then of course our business model as a whole mm -hmm. and uh, the significant shift in customer and uh, in, in consumer attitudes, right? Um, if I can maybe um, elaborate on those three. Yeah. Um, so what I mean by people and their mindset, um, in the beginning we were like, as I just mentioned, a small team of uh, what, five, six mm -hmm. wage warriors wanting to change something in this world. And what was really strong is they always believed in their idea. Although, of course, in the beginning, any startup, but in general, right, they were facing many obstacles and um, it was incredibly hard, but they just kept going. And this mindset and this drive and this motivation is exactly what uh, why we are over 650 waste warriors today mm -hmm. um, in, in 15 countries. And I think it's really incredible to see what um, the right mindset and the right people can do in achieving a mission and uh, in so achieving motivation. our mission and yeah it's it, it's i think this is a, a very yeah one of the biggest biggest uh, key points why we're successful mm -hmm. um in terms of the business model this is i mean when i first applied for this job and read about the business model i was just like wow i mean this just makes perfect sense, sense. Mm -hmm. it, it's incredible i mean uh, if we we basically found a solution to um, help everyone involved, it's like such a massive issue, and at the same time we're creating uh, just winners in the whole process you know what yeah. I mean? so it's it's a two-sided network but users partners environment everyone is winning and of course as we have more users we attract more stores and vice versa and it really allows us to grow um, also in all these different geographies uh, fast and mm -hmm. and tackle this um, this issue at scale. It's right? very so, scalable, yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, in that sense from the start. I think also many of uh, this is what characterizes also why many of us are so driven. Also, because it's of course the mission, but also the business model that just works. And of course, yeah, as a, um, uh, the general environment and this, this this shift in consumer attitude, of course, helps us, right? It's a trend. Yeah. Um, it's a trend here to stay and become bigger. Uh, consumers are um, really increasingly uh, interested in sustainability. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not anymore just like, ah, oh, it would be nice. It's almost a must. Um, and really, they want to align their their purchasing decisions, their lifestyle to these values that more and more uh, of these people have, right? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we, Too Good To Go, enables uh, them to do this. That's really cool because that, that trend, I think, about sustainability really benefited you. You know, people Def yeah, really yeah. started to get on that train and start uh, using apps like yours to 
be more sustainable. So that's very cool that you were able to profit from that. I mean, definitely, we, we were there at the right time. And that's mm -hmm. also something we have to say. Um, it's, uh, I mean, of course, it would have been amazing to even start earlier. But right, uh, it's always important to, when you start a sure. business, to also have this uh, mm -hmm. demand and this consumer mindset. And, and uh, we were really there at the right time, definitely. So what was, for example, a challenge you have encountered along the way? Um, of course, this, the, as I told you, the business idea started in uh, 2015 and then Denmark. And of mm -hmm. course, I, I, I personally joined in 2018. So of course, um, beginning challenges are different to, to yeah. uh, later challenges. But of course, if I can uh, find at least, well, I mean, one was definitely, and this is really one um, that is important if you start any country, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really to grow into this valuable size that makes our value proposition interesting. I mean, if you can yeah. imagine, like, in the beginning, you have zero partner stores, right? Mm -hmm. So um, having more partner stores attracts more, more users. Valuable. But in the big, yes, but in the beginning, you have none of them. So then you have to get some of them. But of course, uh, it, you cannot right away attract a massive amount of users. Yeah. Otherwise, they will all be disappointed because maybe in, then you have only 10 partners. Mm -hmm. So it's really about... Um, one of the challenges is really of getting this relationship going, mm -hmm. right? Um, figuring out when is the right time to... B between supply and demand, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, how to start up a country the best way and really, um, yeah, finding the right balance for that. But of course, once uh, it does, um, the growth feeds itself and the, exactly. the scale it goes so, so quickly, right? But it's really this initial phase that mm -hmm. is, I mean, challenge, but also it's it's obviously a super interesting also period yeah. the startup phase right uh, mm -hmm. to, to get it from the startup to the scale-up phase that's really a challenge but it's also something obviously we all love otherwise we wouldn't do it right of course yeah yeah and maybe and maybe i can say as, as this is all about humans um mm -hmm. also a second one and i think this goes for not just good to go but any company that scales up so so fast mm -hmm. um it's about the people and the culture. So, of course, if I mean, we in Switzerland in a year and a half, we scaled from two to 20, which wow. is just Switzerland. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's already, it's a lot, right? And 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 globally to over 650. So maintaining um, a healthy and this culture that we want to maintain while growing so, so fast, um, obviously is a challenge. And that's a challenge, I guess, for any company that, that has experienced this, uh, this really hyper growth, if you want. Um, thankfully, and um, yeah, thankfully, in, um, we have taken this as our key priority, not just in Switzerland, of course, but mm -hmm. really on a global level, recognizing that this would be a challenge. And um, I must say today, our culture is really stronger than ever. You mastered it and very it, well. No, and it's a super really... Um, just very strongly reflected in in everything that is happening now with the corona and how much people are actually supporting and caring for each other yeah. so but really scaling um this rapid growth while keeping the culture is probably one of the main challenges in mm -hmm. general companies face you've already like just now speaking about humans and the aspect that focuses on them how do you focus on humans like a bit more specifically or how do you make them stay at the core of what you do? Yes. Um, I mean, we are very much human centric uh, mm. business. Um, we have all these different stakeholders from uh, our users uh, to our partners to, of course, our to good to go family. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe I can give examples so you understand better of sure. how we, we actually um, go about some of these things so um of course our partners right i mean uh, one of our five core values um, we just redefined them in the beginning of the year mm -hmm. uh, is uh, we care um and an example of this uh, is um and of how we actually put partners in the center of our business is our recent uh, we care initiative i don't know if you heard about it but now yeah. of course during corona many um Restaurants um, have been forced to switch um, into a takeaway only model uh, mm -hmm. due, to, due to the situation, of course. Um, so what we actually did is we temporarily adapted um, our platform to support our local businesses and enable them to sell takeaway meals via our To Good To Go app. Yeah. So it's really about focusing. I mean, it's our partners. These are human beings. These are local, uh, many of them small, mid-sized businesses. And this is really how we want to help them in also these times and how we are reinventing the business model 
model to really focus mm -hmm. on them. Right? It's really nice that you can help in times like these. Yeah, and I, I, maybe you saw, but so many companies are really adapting business models and really trying mm -hmm. to help. And it's incredible to see how people are there for each other in these yeah. times. It's, 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 it's incredible. Really yeah, it's really it's, nice. Uh, it's really well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, our users, um, of course, um, a large part of the engagement, you can tell me maybe later, but of course, it's also the experience we generate, right? So not only of course you save a meal and uh, i think hopefully you feel good about helping right but yeah, also sure um also for example uh we share with them the amount of co2 that they're saving with every meal rescued um mm -hmm. uh, we offer them the concept of a magic bag that they love and that enables them really to become let's say more creative in their food choices so really thinking about hey what could they like what do they um how can we make this experience better for them and really um Focusing basically on our users in that it's sense. It's about the value think. for them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that would be a good example. And internally, um, of course, our waste warriors, uh, our uh, too good to go family. Um, I think an amazing example uh, of here um, would be our um, global meetup. Um, yeah. This is something we do uh, once a year. As you can imagine, the first one three years ago was a bit smaller than the one like last year. Um, I, in 2019, this was the first I attended. Mm -hmm. We were 270 people. Wow. Um, this year, we, we will be over 600. Um, but crazy. basically... I mean, as you can can imagine, this is a huge investment for a company, right? Mm -hmm. to, to bring everyone together, uh, like to Copenhagen, where our head office is, to 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 share best practice, to reinforce our culture, and and really, most importantly, to spend time together. Of course, I mean, it's a big commitment, right? It's mm -hmm. it's, but it's it's just it does so much for our culture. It's so incredibly empowering, motivating, and I mean, it really focuses on us as employees, as individuals, and as humans, really. Because yeah. theoretically, I mean, it's an investment that you cannot measure the, and quantify the value. But it, mm -hmm. the, I mean, obviously, it's much, much more than what it actually costs. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. It's just so incredibly powerful, really. It's brought you uh, so many benefits. You have very strong culture, as I can see. So mm. that's really nice. That investment has really paid off. For sure. Um, yeah, so speaking about situations and the people and... What do you think the future of work will look like in your company? Yeah, it's a super interesting question, actually. And um, as, uh, as a young um, company in mm -hmm. like uh, technology and uh, connectivity uh, was already at the heart of our business, right? I mean, yeah. even after the, uh, even before the situation. Uh, but of course, as for everyone, um, this, uh, the, the whole um, the whole corona situation has definitely uh, made us more flexible and innovative, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we've started before, of course, we always had hangout calls, of course, but we started um, to do even workshops uh, with 20 people, like mm -hmm. breaking people down in groups, or we started doing virtual team workouts um, every second day. That's so we cool. Have yeah, and really team members doing it. So, um, or like, we call it Corona buddies, right? Where people <laughs> check in on each other every day, whether it's two people with each other or sometimes four. It's really um, finding ways of of cross motivating each other instead of always, let's say, the manager talking uh, down and saying yes, it will mm -hmm. all be good. No, actually cross motivating each other and really keeping this team spirit. Um, so in that sense, this I think we will continue even with the situation changing more of these kind of things. So the online and aspect. Exactly, for sure, definitely. It doesn't mm. mean uh, we believe that the human contact is not uh, still important <laughs> because it is very much so. Mm -hmm. uh, it will always stay very, very important because it's just different, right? Yeah, but um, I think we, we have uh, been adaptable and uh, and we will continue to do some of these things, definitely. And as a second point, of course, remote working is also leading to increased trust, right? So you have to do, you have to have trust in your team members. That increased trust leads to uh, autonomy and really greater, I think, empowerment and also productivity. Mm -hmm. Like people feel trusted. They feel, okay, yes, um, I'm here at home. No one is checking on me, but I do my thing and I really am committed. And it does increase um, your belief in yourself and your productivity. And honestly, um, for us as a sustainable um, focused company, as you can imagine, I mean, the future of work Huge. is 
as much as it is a startup and of course um we all give every day um, 100 percent if not more but it is really about this great balance between uh, motivation for our mission and um really a healthy happy work-life balance yeah okay you wow know? yeah uh, um all right so do you have any advice for people trying to concentrate on innovative human-centered projects yes so if i can say uh, from our experience mm -hmm. and in too good to go what defines us uh, the most um, is really our center approach i talked about this before but our center approach to our values and yeah. our our culture that i just really important it's so um, important what what i learned personally it's just super important to define these from the start if now mm -hmm. someone starts up a project just be clear on what you stand for be clear on how you want to work together be clear on what are the values that drive you and your business because without those everyone can go in a separate Different direction directions. and just uh, you know what i mean it's it's it might sound sometimes a bit like it's all you know like statements and words but it's so much more than that right and yeah. it's crucial that this culture that you define is really reinforced repeatedly um especially as your business grows quickly um i think this really has enabled us to ensure that our um uh, our business stays mission driven and that we can continue to innovate and of really course nice. also stay and uh, i can see how important culture and values is to you and of course the how you've been able to profit from that and how you've come so far in such a short time that's very very nice um yes yeah, so i think we're through with the questions from my side do you have anything you would like to add i mean first uh, thank you so much um <laughs> uh for this uh mm -hmm. for this short discussion was also super super interesting of course for me to um think about all these things and yeah. um, um think these things through and this human centered approach is really something that it, it is at the core of mm -hmm. our business and it should be at the core of most businesses because of course without people how can you achieve anything of right? course yeah yeah so thank you very very much for taking time to do this interview with me it was very interesting and insightful and I think very, very fitting to the whole theme of this, like the human-centered uh, perspective. So, yeah, I think Thank that's Thank you so it. much to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Mm -hmm.